extremely light. Like, it feels like it's, there's nothing on my head right now. Welcome to another Sporties Product Pyrep video, and this one's exciting. Today we are flying with the new Bose A30 Aviation headset. This is the first new around ear headset from Bose in over a decade. The A20, which both of us are wearing today, has been the best-selling headset in aviation for years. It's a great performer, so what can they do to make it better? We are up today in a Cirrus SR22, a pretty noisy airplane, and we're going to find out what's new, what's different. I think the best way to summarize the A30 is that it's a nice upgrade on a product that worked. There's no gee whiz gimmick here, there's no coffee maker built in, no crazy feature to try to uh, impress you. Bose really focused on the fundamentals here, which I really appreciate because a headset is something you wear on every single flight. It needs to just work. So things like comfort and clarity are what really matters here and that's what they've really focused on. So we'll talk about some of the new features with the A30, but let's first go through the four main things a headset has to do for us. And in our book, that means comfort, quiet, clarity, and durability. It's got to pass those four tests. And the first thing on our list is comfort, and it should be, because if we're going to wear this for five hours straight, we want to make sure we have the most comfortable headset. When I put on the A30, it felt very similar to the A20 I just taken off. Most claims they have 20% less clamping force on the A30 now versus the 20. And for those of you that are like me with big fat heads, uh, you're going to enjoy the, the less side squeeze on the headset. They still have the same center cam mechanism, so it can fit big heads as well as small heads. And they have really great weight distribution on this headset. You'll notice these two new foam pads on the uh, sides of the headband that help equally distribute the weight all around your head. Overall, this is a really, really comfortable headset. Comfort was number one on our list, and the A30 is excellent. Number two is quiet. That's the job you have a headset for, after all, is to keep things quiet. The A20 was a great performer here with great active noise reduction. The A30 is also a great performer. I don't notice huge differences here. It does sound slightly different. I'm not sure it's necessarily better or worse. The difference is this is a digital a &R system in the Bose A30, whereas the A20 had a more traditional analog system. What does that mean? Well, it means that the a &R works in a broader range of airplanes. So it can work great in a really noisy airplane like the Cirrus today. It can also work very well in a quieter airplane like a turbine or a jet airplane where there, maybe there's more high frequency noise, more wind noise. So it works really well across a wide range of airplanes. It also does mean that the ANR is upgradable over time. It's essentially software upgrade, something you could do with analog ANR. So in terms of quiet, I'd say it's great. The A20 was great as well. I don't notice a dramatic difference, uh, but the combination of the really improved comfort and the great Bose ANR makes this a great all-day headset. The third item on our list is clarity, and Bose headsets just have a great reputation for being extremely clear. I sound like I should be flying a 747 when wearing this headset, and that's been true for Bose headsets over the years. Uh, the mic just works, it works great, it has active equalization, so it will pick up my voice, and it also cancels out a lot of the other noise in the cockpit. So even though we're in this really noisy Cirrus, you hear me, not the engine. The A30 has all the Bluetooth features you've come to know and love about Bose, so you can do music as well as cell phone. Uh, it is very simple to use. It has the mute, mix, and off function just like it has in the past. You can control the level of the music with the side buttons right here, plus and minus. And it just works and works great and sounds great just like Bose has in the past. So the bluegrass music that I'm pumping in right now sounds just perfect. Uh, one quick tip, when you look at the microphone, there is a white dot on the microphone. That tells you which way is front and back. We've had some people in the past turn the microphone sideways, and you'll notice the microphone doesn't work as well when it's sideways like that. Keep the microphone pointed towards your mouth. The fourth item on our must-have list is durability. A good headset can last years, sometimes 10, 12 years even, so it's got to be built to last. And don't let the Bose's lightweight and high comfort features fool you there. This is a really rugged headset. Bose headsets are TSO certified, and that's not required for most general aviation pilots, but it does mean this headset has passed over 140 different tests. They drop it on concrete, they put it in salt fog, they do EMI testing, so it has passed a lot of those rigorous tests. 
One other nice feature is the cable is a lot thinner on the A30, a lot more flexible, a whole lot less weight, but it's still really, really rugged. There's a Kevlar core inside the copper cables here. So the new cable is a great example where Bose has kept their durability, but improved the comfort. Here's another tip, this one about the cord. All these headsets for years have come with these clothing clips so that you can clip the cable to your shirt or your jacket. A lot of pilots I notice don't use that, but it actually makes a big difference. That cable can sometimes pull on the headset and it makes the headset feel like it's heavier than it really is. So if you want to get maximum comfort, use that clothing clip and clip the cable on so there's absolutely no tension on the cable. It can make a big difference. The Bose A30 has incorporated some of the features that you find in the Bose ProFlight into their general aviation headset. You'll find it has the tap to talk through function, so I can tap the ear cup twice, and that turns off the A&R on that ear, or at least lets me hear through it. The idea is if you're in a commercial cockpit and you want to have someone come into the cockpit and have a conversation, you can do so by just tapping the ear cup. That opens up the ear cup, and now I can tap to close it back up. There are three different modes of A&R on the Bose A30 headset. The low mode is what we just did here. When you tap to talk through, that is the low mode of A&R. Most of the time, us GA pilots are just going to leave it on high and forget about it. And that's what's going to cancel the most noise, especially in these noisy aircraft like Cirrus, Aztecs, and Cessnas. The medium level of A&R is really for jet and turbines. This will allow you to hear a little bit more of your surrounding noise while still canceling quite a bit and protecting your hearing. The side swappable mic on the A30 is right here. You'll notice there's these two little wings on it. To disconnect it, I just open those two wings and it falls right out. So I don't have to worry about having a screwdriver to change mic microphones from one side to the other. The other side of the headset, you'll see there's this little uh, plug. And that, too, also comes out the same way. There's a little wing that you flip open and then you can just pull it right out. Swap the mic from one side to the other. This is great if you're a co-pilot sitting on the right side of the airplane like I am right now. I can easily flip this over and put it on this side. Uh, something a lot of pilots don't realize is there is a left and right ear cup on these headsets. So we don't want to take and just flip the whole headset around and put it on backwards because we still want to have that left on the left side and right on the right side. This is why we have the side swipeable mic. So we can move it from this side to this side while keeping the ear cups on the appropriate side. A small thing that Bose did on this headset, which is kind of neat, is they put an L and an R on the inside of the ear cup. So you know right away when you look at it, which side is left and which side is right. But the A30 comes with all the same cable configurations as you're familiar with the A20. So you have Lemo options, PJ plug options, XLR options, all that good stuff. And when you have a Lemo or an XLR plug, you do have the ability to power through the panel if your aircraft is so equipped. One of the neat hidden features here on the Bose A30 is that inside the battery pack, you're going to find a micro USB port. And that port really was made for doing firmware upgrades in the future. However, we found that it can also do power. So in a pinch, if you have a backup iPad battery pack and you want to power your Bose headset, you could do so by opening up the back of your ANR box, removing those batteries, and powering it through that USB port. So we've been testing out this A30 in a lot of different airplanes because each airplane has a different noise environment. Each pilot has different preferences. We've been working it out hard here in a Cirrus SR22, running at full power here, really trying to make this A&R work hard. But we also want to check it out in some other airplanes. So we're going to take it flying in Sporty's famous red Aztec. That's another noisy airplane, a twin-engine airplane, so a little different noise profile with two props out there turning. And then we're going to put it in the classic Cessna 172 and see how it works in that airplane. When testing new headsets, there's nothing better than to take it in our old classic Aztec. This thing is a noisy beast. On takeout, off we registered around 116 decibels. And this headset handled it without a problem. The Bose A30 with digital NR is, is super quiet here in this aircraft. Uh, today we're flying with our Executive Vice President, Brett Kobe, and he has a lot of time on Bose A20 headsets. Let's get his reaction on the new Bose A30 headset. Oh, wow, yeah, you can tell a difference. You know what's interesting is you uh, you definitely lose more of the low-frequency engine sounds, but you hear more of the wind noise, you know, higher frequency. Oh, okay. You don't hear more wind noise, but you just you, it's more there because of the, you know, the, the low-frequency sound being taken out from the active noise reduction. Yeah, yeah that, that feels really good, too. It's definitely a lighter clamping force uh, on your head compared to the A20, which I just took off and 
been wearing for about uh, an hour here. You know what's interesting, after wearing the A20 for about an hour and then putting the A30 on, uh, the noise reduction was that much better that I had to turn the volume down on the radios here, on the uh, GTN 750, uh, because the, the relationship of the audio is that much louder. And, uh, it definitely tells you you're going to be saving your hearing some, both from not having to listen to ATC so loud and from having the ambient audio or the ambient uh, engine sound outside the headset. It is interesting in the series, we no almost noticed an identical noise canceling between an A20 and A30. But here in the Aztec, which is just a noisy old beast, you notice a, a, a significant decrease in overall noise when you have the A30 on versus the A20. Yeah, uh, I think a big part of that too, we got engines on both sides here. So the yeah. engines are really close together. You've got two 250 horsepower engines cranking away out there. And so you've got noise reduction really coming from left and right, and that's even more important uh, in an airplane like this. It may be a small thing, but I also think your mic is a little clearer than the mic of an A20. Maybe that's just me. I'm swallowing my microphone right now, but you definitely sound a little bit better, more professional 747 driver using <laughs> an A30 versus uh, the A20. I'd agree with that, too. The side tone I'm hearing sounds a little crisper uh, than what I was hearing with the A20. Not a big difference, but just small uh, differences you'll notice when you know, upgrade from a headset from a, an older version to a newer one like this. The most popular training aircraft in our fleet is the Cessna 172, and at Sporties we have over a dozen in our flight school, so we put a lot of time in them. What better test bed than a 172 to try out new headsets? Today we have Hunter with us, who is a CFI and works in our customer service department, and he's been flying with a Bose A20 for a long time. Today we're going to have him try out the new Bose A30 headset. It's extremely light. Like it feels like it's there's nothing on my head right now. Going from my A20 to this, that's crazy. The A and R though is is very impressive. Just coming from the different modes, it, it's crazy to see the difference. Uh, extremely comfortable. You can definitely tell the weight distribution is different. It it, it feels much lighter, even though it may not be lighter. Um, the clamping pressure, however, is a significant improvement. I definitely I feel like it's a lot more comfortable. I feel like as a CFI, I could wear this headset all day and not get tired of wearing it as to wear my A20. Uh, getting into the later hours of the day, you kind of get tired of wearing your headset. This is a headset I feel like I could wear all day and never get tired of it, honestly. I know the question many of you are probably asking, how does the A30 compare to the A20? I would say they're both great headsets. They're, they're both Bose quality. The biggest thing I noticed with the A30 is that comfort. There is less side pressure. You barely feel like it's squeezing your head at all. And while it's the same weight as the A20, almost to the ounce, it feels like the weight distribution is different, so it ends up feeling a little bit lighter. So I know that on longer flights, this A30 is going to be a nice upgrade. As far as noise reduction, they're different. I'm not sure one's better than the other. So the a &R performance on either of these headsets, honestly, is great. I'm not sure I would buy it specifically just because one's better than the other. It's certainly very good. There is that nice piece with the A30 that it's firmware upgradable, so it could be new options down the road. Another nice feature that seems like a small thing, but this thinner cable really does pay off. I really noticed as I move my head around the cockpit, it's a lot more uh, comfortable. I have less pressure pulling down, especially on this left ear cup. The other place where the A30 shines would be a turbine airplane. So if you're flying a turboprop or a jet, even an airliner, I think the A30 is a really well-designed headset for that environment. You can do that tap for talk-through. You can put the A&R into medium mode that may be more appropriate for you. Uh, it's just got a lot of features that are perfect, both in a GA piston airplane like a Cirrus or a Cessna, but it can move right into a turbine cockpit and not miss a beat. The Bose A30 is a smart upgrade on what was already a great headset, the A20. We really appreciate its new comfort features. You can wear this all day without any pain. For more information on the Bose A30, check out sporties.com slash Bose. And we hope to see you again on another Sporties product pirate video.